Welcome back. Joining me now is a man who usually hides behind the camera for very good reason. I have with me now the founder and CEO of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe. Hello. Not usually your gig. You're usually a little more covert. You got you now sitting on a couch in front of a live studio yes. audience. A little bit of a switch up for you. Definitely. This is really cool and exciting. I love the energy here. So I remember when I first met you, I feel like we were both like just coming up. Maybe yeah. you were obviously a little bit before me, but I remember I met you in Palm Beach at the Horowitz Foundation, yes. Horowitz Center, Horowitz yes. Center. And um, hearing your story about what you were doing, you started showing all these videos and all these operatives that you had, uh, you know, entrenched at CNN, mm -hmm. uh, people at, and Facebook. Facebook kind of really trying to tell the story that these companies uh, were really encroaching in, in totalitarian territory. How did Project Veritas get started? What happened to you, James? What, good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all transformed in the last few years. Now we have people on the inside that reach out to us, wow. like inside CNN, the federal government. But in the beginning, I was in college and I was surrounded by political correctness and professors who were... Uh, behaving badly, and I decided to do something about it. Started a student newspaper. One of the first videos we ever did was about Lucky Charms cereal, because uh, as an Irish person, I was, uh, I said I was offended by the Lucky Charms, and I went in there with a hidden camera. This is about 15 years, or 20 years ago. And I said, uh, I, it offends my heritage, and they told me they would remove the cereal because it's racist against Irish people. Oh my gosh. So it kind of became like Borat meets 60 Minutes. <laughs> so we've done, I don't know, hundreds of, of investigations. And what's changed, Candace, is now people on the inside reach out to me. I had to infiltrate these groups. I had to go undercover. And now, just like last week, a student inside the school uh, took a photo of the Antifa flag on the wall and yeah. told us about the, the teacher, and we corroborated it. So it's become kind of a grassroots movement of people on the inside that film what's going on. Actually, let's actually start there because I think, especially on this show, I've been kind of unpacking uh, for people the indoctrination that is happening in the school systems. And I think it's so much worse. And then parents are finally really starting to understand that we have a problem here, uh, you know, when they're not even teaching your children mathematics or engineering, and they're teaching them wokeisms, and you have these professors and teachers that are just activists. And you did uncover uh, this teacher, and I want to show the clip uh, from Project Veritas. So let's roll the clip of the teacher, uh, Mr. Antifa himself. <laughs> I have an Antifa flag on my, on my wall. Um, and a student complained about that, and he said it made him feel uncomfortable. Well, this is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable, so if you feel uncomfortable, I, I don't really know what to tell you. I have 180 days to turn them into revolutionaries. How do you do that? How do you scare them? There is a reason why Generation Z, these kids, are, are becoming further and further left. I, I, I probably uh, as, as far left as you can go. I've had like students show for like protests, community events, you know, tabling, food distribution, all sorts of, all sorts of things. So like, they, it's, and I do it for extra credit. So they get points for doing it. They have to convince people that this is what we actually need. They did nothing and uh, until we showed up and then they said they're going to fire this guy. So they admitted he did something wrong. Now but, the question is... But he's not is, the only person that should be fired. Because if this, if, if Mao Zedong is, is waving high in, as a flag and Antifa as a flag in the classroom, presumably the administrators are walking around, seeing, other teachers are seeing it. So why is he the person that gets fired? That's why this is such a big deal. Right. Because the, 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 most of the time, we are always on defense. We're always complaining about the problems. Well, now they're on defense. And there was a school board meeting uh, that happened the day after this tape came out, and hundreds of parents showed up. They were all indignant. They were all upset. They were all on the verge of tears. I was on the verge of tears watching them, and they were all upset that, why didn't you guys do anything? Mm. So the, you, to photograph the thing makes you do it, but you saw it, you did nothing. So the system is completely broken. There's a lot more people like this guy, but I feel like there was a turning point moment last week to see all these hundreds of outrage. By the way, the school board meeting occurred, and they, they snuck out of the board meeting. The superintendent left wow. and got into their Tesla cars and drove away. Wow. It was truly an extraordinary moment, but I do feel like we're at a turning point. And I feel like what gives me hope is the fact that I am receiving these messages on the inside of all these organizations. The video that we saw from Project Veritas is what brought us out tonight. Um, as a parent in Sacramento, I was just floored. The man had an Antifa flag behind his desk. Yeah, Chairman Mao in the f***ing Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Okay, this has got to stop. And all of you people out there, your men, ex-military, ex-law enforcement, current law enforcement, I'm ex-law enforcement, you need to be on the front lines every day! You guys should be held responsible. Honestly, I'd be ashamed to go out and get coffee tomorrow morning. 
Yeah. And, and you really, I mean, when you think about the history of this country and what we used to do to folks that would do something such as child abuse to our children, and that man's still enjoying life right now, unfortunately, you guys have a lot to do. This means that in two weeks, in 13 days, he was allowed to change my daughter's mind about some fascist crap that y'all have led in this school. How long does it have to go on before somebody says something? How long? How long? What are you gonna do? That's the question. Get him out of here. We don't fucking care about this boy. He got to go. <laughs> I mean, uh, it must it must honestly feel incredible uh, for you to see that you started this organization and you're you're I love the the slogan be brave do something. People step up and you see what an impact it's had in this community because sadly parents didn't even know this was happening. You assume as a parent that you can drop your child off and they're going to be safe. And it's actually right now in this society, quite the opposite. Mm. They think I have six hours, just like you said, I have 180 days, six hours a day to indoctrinate these children and turn them into radicals. It is unacceptable that only he got fired. Every single person sitting there should be fired. Yes. The entire administration should be fired. Yes, but and the fact that he was fired or they're saying they're gonna fire him is such a big deal because it's tantamount to an admission they did something wrong. And a lot of people on the left are heedless. They're shameless. They stand behind. Charlie Chester, the technical director, I think it's another clip you have coming up at some point during the show. He, nothing happened to him. He, he said, we, we propagandize people. We, we, we try to hurt Trump. Uh, he says that he effectively wanted more people to die due to COVID to get more ratings. Nothing happened. So the fact that the teacher, they said they were going to fire him, it's one small step. A lot of the comments I get are, nothing ever happens to these people. There's a cynicism in this country. There's a hopelessness. And I say you change one life, you, you can change the entire world. You make one small difference, it can change things. It's the beginning of something. Yeah, that, was, that school board meeting was the most powerful thing I've ever seen. And I've been doing this for a long time because what I saw was a people from all walks of life, all political persuasions pissed off and, and they felt inspired. And when you, people don't mess around when it comes to their kids too. Right, and I think I've always said, this is a winning issue, I think for conservatives. And I think this is the one issue, children, in terms of protecting the children, that it's not a left or right issue. It's actually a uniting issue. Yeah, and we're it, all disinformation. Everything's campaign. disinformation. Reality is disinformation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, very, it's very 1984. It is very 1984. I mean, the, the, the communist teacher said that he wants to make students uncomfortable. We confronted him in the street with a microphone and he said, you're making me feel uncomfortable. Right. So these people are just twisted. But the most important thing to expose is the media. You know, and Andrew Breitbart taught this to me. You have to expose the media for what they are. And that's why the CNN tape we did was so effective. Twitter banned me for, for revealing what the CNN guy said. He said he's a propagandist. Jack Dorsey banned me for quoting him. Mm -hmm. And you have to expose tech and media because everything is downstream from culture. Culture is downstream from data. Right. So you have to reveal the tech oligarchy with the media. We have people inside almost all newsrooms at this point. We've had dozens of people reach out to Project Veritas from within mm -hmm. newsrooms who are currently recording. They say, well, don't, you know, don't film us. Well, if you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't have anything to, to be afraid of. And you'll see stories come out in the coming weeks on that. I, I can't wait for that. And I will say you are, you are so correct that the media has become increasingly problematic, but it's why they want censorship, because they're realizing that they have lost the narrative. They've lost control. They want people like you gone. They want people like me gone. They want to make sure that they assume all power uh, because people are waking up and realizing that this is not, this is not a media. Well, we fight back. We, I sued the New York Times for defamation, and we're one of eight or nine people since 1964 that have gotten past motion to dismiss. So I'm going to be deposing the New York Times times on camera under oath and you'll wow. see those tapes come out next week. Amazing. And James, I will say to you, gauntlet challenge, can you get somebody inside of the DOJ because we know they are as corrupt as the day Maybe is. I already have someone inside the DOJ. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I know, I know they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are watching you. <laughs>